Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the tenth and final video in the LibGTX Box Studio Untitled tutorial. So here is the original game. Um, I have a couple extra stuff in here. Uh, I started working at trying to come up with new objects to put on the game, um, and I only came up with these spikes. So, um, oh, <laughs> messed up there. Good job, Box Studio. Uh, so here are spikes, so, you know, they're basic, you run into them, you lose, pretty much. Um, so yeah, you can make your own objects if you want. Crap. Um, it's pretty much the same as the crystals, except I put everything in the spikes layer, so over here, those are all spikes. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see, I'm just... What was I going to do in this video? Just talk about some stuff. Uh, first, I'm just going to go over some of the changes from the tutorial game. First off, I got rid of that accumulator here in the uh, game loop. I decided not to use that anymore and just use the time step here for Box City World Update. So, um, yeah. Uh, no more of that fixed time step in the game loop here. I'll, I'll just let it run whenever it wants to, so... Um... What else? Right. Uh... Disposing shapes. I didn't do that in the tutorial, so... Anytime you use shapes, like over here when I'm creating the player... Uh, here I have the polygon shape. I forgot to dispose those, so... Every time you make new shapes, you have to dispose them. That's in create walls here for the body and stuff. I create a new chain shape, I have to dispose it, stuff like that. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. Oh, uh, I created the bounded camera class. It's pretty much exactly the same as an orthographic camera, except it's bound within a rectangle that you can specify. I just made it. I just made this class so it's easier for me to make sure the camera doesn't go outside the tile map by giving it the tile map bounds. So, um, what else? That's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, some tips that you could probably change. Um, use the texture packer. Uh, the texture packer basically shoves a bunch of images into a single image file and it gives you back that single image file along with some some other file that sort of tells you which uh, where each of the different individual images are so you can use the texture packer to p just put a bunch of images onto a single texture so you know not, you don't get too much texture binding um, because that's a relatively costly uh, operation to bind uh, textures. I think that goes into VRAM or something. I'm not really sure about the mechanics of that. So, um, yeah, if you want to, you could try using the texture packer too. And instead of uh, putting the, what do you call it, using the uh, textures hash map in the content class. Um, what else? Uh, tiled, right, tiled. Over here, um, instead of using the tile map for collision, maybe you can just use your own object layer for collision, like over here. Uh, just call this collision. You can make boxes over here instead. <coughs> um, for a collision, and the good thing about this is that you can have collision like whatever you want. Oh crap, how do I st how do I stop this thing? Escape! Stop! Holy crap! What? What just happened there? Did I press enter? How do I stop this thing? Delete? No. Right click? No. <laughs> how do I make this thing stop? Uh, nope, I have no idea. Anyway, um, yeah, you can use circles for collision. I don't really know. You can make your own polygon. Oh, crap. Whoa, that looks cool. Okay, that's, how do I make this stop? Oh my god, I don't know how to make this thing stop. Um, 
Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, you can try using objects for collision instead of tiles. So that gives you a little more freedom uh, to create like various terrains. Like you know how those driving games, like those hill car racing games, those use like terrains. So I know they're randomly generated, but if you want to make your own terrain, then obviously you can use the polyline over here and then just do something like, and then make a hill, boosh. <laughs> oh crap, that all went into the spikes. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, one of the other things you could do. Use objects for a collision. Uh, what else? You can try using um, libgdx's scene 2D stuff. Um, this is all like actors, stages, screens, all that stuff. I haven't really looked into it and I don't think I am going to look into it so that's just a suggestion for everybody if they want to use it or try to use it scene 2D. Um, so yeah that's pretty much gonna be it. I created a couple more maps. I only created five. The first two were from the first video and then three, four, and five. I'm too lazy to make more maps. This one's like trippy. Oh crap. Wait, nope. I don't know. He'll figure it out. Try to get these. Nope. Oh, right. Uh, one more thing. Um, what did I do? Over here? No, here. Yep. Uh, I also have now mouse input. Or touch for androids or mobile. Um, where is it? Handle input. I have keyboard input. That's Z and X. And I also have mouse or in touch input for Android. Left side of the screen to switch blocks, right side of the screen to jump. So if you want to, you can try using the mouse over here. So, um, <clears throat> excuse this one. So right side to jump, left side to switch color. I have a really bad mouse, so this is probably gonna get messed up. Ah, crap! Um... So, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. Uh, you can definitely try to put all this stuff on an Android if you have one. <laughs> I don't have an Android, so... Um, I'm, go I'm gonna try to get one soon, though, and try to put this game onto it and see how that goes. But, uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this series. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, and I don't know. I'll see you if I ever make another one.